Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Oleg Giberstein on the line, and he's co-founder and COO at CoinRule. Oleg, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Adam. Great to be on. All right, Oleg. So excited to learn more about Coin Rule and really how you're helping investors and your clients. Um, but before we get into that, um, maybe let's start at your background. Like, how did you get started as an entrepreneur and in business? Sure. Um, so I started my career in banking. I was working at Citigroup uh, in London in the UK. Um, didn't really feel like it was the right place for me. I mean, it was fun. It was interesting, but like didn't quite feel right. And I started like looking around and kind of I knew that I wanted to do something else, but it was fairly difficult to to find it. And with a bit of experimentation, I eventually left banking, started my first company that that, that totally failed. And but in the process of that, I met my current co-founders really kind of went down the crypto blockchain rabbit hole. And yeah, here we are with uh, CoinRoo. It's awesome. Um, love love bringing on entrepreneurs, um, executives and business owners really to share, you know, how they're able to do what they do and what matters to them. So that's great. Um, you know, there's a lot of individuals out there right now that are, you know, kind of uh, pivoting or shifting or looking for new things to do. And I just think that this whole, you know, DeFi, this whole, this whole space is just interesting. Lots of opportunity, both from the investment side and also obviously from the, you know, as an entrepreneur side like lots of different ideas and things that you can be a part of and or um, and or ideas that you can progress um, what are you seeing like what's interesting to you right now in the marketplace Wow that's a really good question I mean the the beauty is that there's such a like incredible amount of innovation happening mm -hmm. and people are really biased by the price so people see the price of like cryptocurrency is going down and they think, oh yeah, this is, this is like done, you know, this is bad time now to be getting in. But the reality is that people keep building. Um, something I'm personally extremely excited about are some of those scaling solutions for Ethereum, um, the so-called layer twos that are coming out on the market. So one of the problems we've really faced over the last years is that using Ethereum is extremely expensive. Um, and really only possible for a small number of people because the network is so congested because so many people are using it. But layer two solutions, I'm not going to go into the technical details, but they provide really simple uh, ways to, to scale the network. And from an investment point of view, these layer twos are going to have probably also their own tokens over the next, you know, year or so. So even if today you already start experimenting on them, there's a good chance you might get an airdrop, you might get like tokens just given for just trying out applications on it. And from a both entrepreneurial point of view as well as investment point of view, I think there's there's a huge potential. Some of these layer twos I'm most interested in are platforms like Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, ZK Sync, and also Starkware. Hmm. How do you think DeFi can create or maybe enable a fairer financial system than maybe what we currently have? So I'll give you an example. Um, in today's financial system, any kind of financial experimentation happens in an extremely tightly controlled environment. You know, you have some physics PhD at a quant hedge fund working out of New York. In DeFi, you can literally have like a kid in, you know, Kenya or the Philippines hacking together something in, in their basement and, and release it. And no one cares. It's permissionless. It's open. Um, it's the best ideas and the best products that win. Um, just the, the amount of of, of experimentation and progress that will come out of this is, is unimaginable. Like it's a complete game changer for the way uh, how, how finance will be operating in the next 50 years. So let's uh, let's switch uh, switch pace a little bit here. I want to know more about Coin Rule. So how did you come up with the idea for this company? Yeah, sure. Um, so Coin Rule was an idea actually of my co-founder Gabriele. 
Um, mm. He was uh, trying to, he had come across the strategy. He met this guy at the party uh, and this guy had uh, like a quant strategy that just every day was buying the top performer of the day and selling the, the, the top performer of the previous day. And um, he was like, oh yeah, I want to run the same strategy. And he sat down at home and he realized, hang on, there just isn't an easy way to do that. Like, it's really, really hard. You have to actually know programming. And then he started kind of coming up with the first designs and possible solutions. And we spoke about that. And I had exactly the same problem. You have a strategy in mind, and there just isn't an easy way to to automate it. And given existing solutions, always try to, like, fix you into like their own framework. They don't really give you the liberty to define your own strategies. And that's when, when we started CoinRo. That's great. Um, so tell us a little bit more about where the company is at today. Like tell us a little bit more about what you do on a day to day. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, uh, we've, we've gone through extremely fast growth over the past year. I mean, obviously the, mm-hmm. the market uh, has been extremely strong. Um, we went through Y Combinator, the accelerator program that uh, burst, you know, Coinbase and Reddit and Airbnb and so many other companies. Um, so we've been growing pretty much 20x over the last like two years. Um, we crossed over two billion in traded volume, which is extremely exciting. Our users are creating literally tens of thousands of strategies every month. Uh, so we're seeing we're seeing uh, an incredible amount of of traction around it right now. Oh man, that, that's so exciting! And congratulations. It's not. It's definitely not easy Thank you. to uh, to innovate in the space and to build and to and you're. I mean, you're getting. Uh, you're the the proof is in the numbers. You said over two billion. Did you say in transactions? Um, so in terms of monthly transactions, it really varies. But in terms of strategies created per month, it's at over 30,000 strategies per month created. Um, so wow. that's a user literally building an algorithmic trading strategy and launching it. Man, that, that, that's so significant. What is some of the feedback that you receive from the platform overall, whether it be from the users or kind of the, the community in general? Mm-hmm. People want more help. Like we kind of our uh, user base consists of two types of users: the relative beginners and the more advanced traders. Now, the more advanced traders, they want more, you know, more power, more, uh, more, more toys to play with, more indicators, more exchanges, uh, more kind of ways to to uh, adjust the logic and so on. The beginners um, want more ready-made stuff. They want strategies that uh, have been already tested by us, built by us, um, so that they can just like plug, like they can just put in money into them and set it and forget it. Uh, one way we are addressing this is by building a marketplace. So basically, that will allow uh, the more advanced creators uh, to to build strategies, which then they can uh, make available uh, to, to, to the more beginner level users. So that, 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 that will help both sides, for example. But it's quite interesting to see how the market evolves. Like, every, like in every product you have kind of the builders and the consumers, and we're definitely mm-hmm. seeing that. That's awesome. It, it, it's awesome. And, and the, coin rule, the um, coin rule journey, as you've explained it, is, is really exciting. And I, and I know you have um, much planned um, on the horizon. So I just, I just have to ask, I mean, what's next? What's next for, for, the, for coin rule? Like what kind of plans do you have coming ahead? Yeah, um, we have lots of features coming. I mean, kind of on the, on the more tactical level, obviously, some of the uh, trading improvements that I was saying that some of the more advanced mm-hmm. users are asking for on the more kind of, let's say, big level. So things like the marketplace and the backtesting solution that will allow users to test their strategies on historical data, um, but also on the medium to long term, we'll be venturing out into stocks and also decentralized finance. So basically uh, allow users to build automated trading strategies, not just for cryptocurrencies on uh, platforms like Binance or Coinbase Pro, but also on maybe Interactive Broker, maybe Toro, uh, maybe Uniswap and, and OneInch and so on. So kind of really to be a layer of automation across any platform and any asset class. Hmm. 
And maybe speak on for a moment, and for the, for those that have never um, that that aren't quite as familiar with it, which I but I know a lot of our audiences, but um, maybe some of them have never traded and or thought about the idea of using um, automated bots or anything of that nature. Can you maybe just speak on that and just that? I guess it's always kind of the elephant in the room, thinking like, okay, are the hedge funds creating all of this versus um, you know versus what can the investor do? Because I see you're really um, with with your platform overall, what you're doing is you're making it really accessible so that many can can actually participate. Yeah. So in today's world, right now, about seventy eighty percent of financial flows are uh, directed by by algorithmic hedge funds, and mm-hmm. at the same time, we have this retail trading revolution that started, you know, in the last three, four, five years with the rise of Robin Hood, the rise of platforms like mm-hmm. eToro, you have more and more people actually looking to trade and invest. Now, those normal people that are getting into it are gradually, you know, they're learning, right? They are progressing. Yeah. And they're realizing, hang on, we need tools to actually be able to compete in this market. And you just can't, in a market that's 24-7 up and running, you mm-hmm. just can't sit there manually looking at the chart and buying and selling. That just mm-hmm. doesn't work anymore. So you like today we talk about algorithmic trading as you know as a tool as a, some extra element. But in five years time, in ten years time, there will be no other trading but algorithmic trading. People will just be building strategies rather than just pressing buy and sell. And that is part of the revolution that that we are at the forefront of. Yeah, and I don't, and I feel like like people um, uh, shouldn't necessarily be scared of that. That that's just as you use the word evolution, because if you think about where trading just in general started in stock, I mean, people holding up papers, right, and sales slips for uh, what a hundred okay. years or something, right? And so now the idea of being able to even push that button to buy or sell was like really scary at one point now it's common right so i I feel like in a certain amount of time i don't know what the time is going to be but exactly what you said when that happens um and people are talking more so about their strategy and and you know how that's how that's executed it's going to be just the natural evolution right yeah exactly natural evolution and apart from that like people are looking for ways to earn additional income Mm -hmm. so as a matter of fact more people are going to be finding their way into investing and trading and and things like that. And those people will have actually uh, the same tools to to use for their trading and investing as professional investors. Like the same way, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there wasn't such a thing as a robo-advisor. You could, there weren't ETFs, you know, normal people did not have access to to those type of investment opportunities but gradually with technological progress these opportunities were being made available to normal people it's the same as happening with with these more advanced tools that we will get to the point where just normal investors already today are building up more uh, understanding and education and figuring out how to use them to their advantage. And for us as a company, the challenge is to make it as easy as possible and also fun and educational so that people, you know, actually have the motivation to to stick with us and stick on that learning journey. Awesome. Well, Oleg, uh, it's been great having you on the show today and learning more about Coin Rule and your background and, and really the success in this and, and giving um, many different um, investors and traders out there an opportunity and just by creating this amazing platform. So that being said, if somebody is, is listening to this or watching this and they want to learn more about Coin Rule, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so the easiest way to find us is on coinrule.com. It's that C-O-I-N-R-U-L-E, coinrule.com. Um, you can also find us on Twitter at coinrulehq. And if you're interested to get in touch with me personally, you can also find me on Twitter at ogiberstein. 
Fantastic. And uh, we'll put all that information in the show notes so that the audience can just click on on, uh, on the um, show notes and head right on over and check you out. Um, and speaking of the audience, if this is your first time engaging with Mission Matters or listening to one of our episodes, we're all about bringing on entrepreneurs and executives and experts and having them share, you know, why they do what they do, like how they do it and why it's important to the marketplace. Um, if that's the type of content or um, information that's interesting to you, we welcome you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And uh, Oleg, really, it has been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Adam. <laughs>